Welcome back to the dead ball area. This week we're going to look at Freddie Stewart's try versus Australia in the Autumn Internationals. In a game that saw England dominant, Stewart's try at the 7 minute mark was probably the standout moment of the game. Excellent interplay between England's forwards and backs set the young fullback on his way. And throughout the game Australia struggled with discipline, conceding 18 points from 18 penalties. Stewart's try came directly from this ill discipline when England were awarded a free kick after Australia were penalised for pre-engaging. Already in formation, England react quickly and attack wide fast. And it's important to understand why England play off the free kick like this, as opposed to playing the bomb or trying to win a scrum penalty. And the first is obviously they have ambitions to play more aggressive attacking rugby. The second is because it disrupts Australia's defence. You have the Australian pack clustered here and a wide defence set on England's right. If Young's taps and plays through the retreating Australians, he'll maybe make a short run before he's hauled down and he runs the risk of being isolated and penalised. It puts a lot of pressure on the forwards to get there and support. But additionally, the wide defence stays intact and even if England recycle, they then have to break it down through subsequent phases. By immediately tacking wide, they engage a set defence and force the Australians to adapt, which is where errors are most likely to occur. This means England can then look to flow back and attack the disrupted and unsettled defence, just as they would off a scrum. Running the set play they were already set for, England go quickly wide. Now watch how England's back row instantly set off where they know the likeliest breakdown is, Curry's angle indicating that even though this is a free kick, the phase map remains the same and England are playing wide off this set piece. Throughout the game England's back line interchanged and we can see Slade at 15, Tuolangi at 12 and Stewart on the wing. With Farrell distributing at 12, Smith is free to roam, and one of Owen Farrell's biggest strengths is his ability to distribute under defensive pressure. Here he runs a full 10 metres to make sure the defence is engaged and that everything they are doing pressures and challenges the defenders. His run holds Hooper, O'Connor, Baisami, and it also interests Ikatao, enough that when he finally reads the backdoor play, it's so late that Smith has already beaten him. The attack is actually quite lateral at this stage, so Smith straightens and takes it into contact. But as England recycle, let's pause and consider that both Smith and Stewart are in the shot here, on the far side of the pitch, and then consider how instrumental they are in scoring this try. So try and track them through if you can. England have immediately adopted a 3-3-1 formation, with Farrell sitting in behind Sinclair to control things. Laws opts to keep momentum going and plays the inside ball to Underhill, something we saw him do repeatedly against Tonga and throughout the Lions tour. Again, look at how close to the tackle line Laws plays. That means the inside ball gets underhill through the contact and the end result is quick ball. England's ruck speed has beaten Smith to position, so Farrell, having now pushed up the first receiver, plays a short pass to keep forward momentum going. That flat pass brings two runners onto the ball and a late pass selection allows Otoje to get on the outside and win the momentum battle. The three phases in and England have made it to the defensive edge again. We can see they've also heavily outnumbered the Australian defence and Smith and Stewart are back in position, and this means Farrell can now push up at first receiver, and then we can see both Smith and Rod outside of his options. Importantly again, look at how close to the tackle line England are operating. Rod's run holds Rodder, and that late pass from Farrell again allows Smith to float off. And whilst that does allow Kellaway to push up on the edge, cutting out the long pass, it also leaves Ikatao caught between two minds, at which point we get a full view of why Smith is so highly rated. Quick scan to see what's unfolding, a double pump to interest Ikatao and make him bite in, coupled with a hitch kick to then sit him down so he can't recover in time to pick up Stewart. All these things combined allow Swift to hold his space just long enough for Stewart to cut a line and take a late pass in the gap. And while Stewart has a bit of work to do, the try is assured as soon as the line break occurs. One of the issues with this slider play is that the attack can become quite lateral if they aren't holding defenders. So something I really liked about this try is how England constantly changed throughout the attack, their formation, the pace of the attack, and also the angle of the runners in the attack. Stewart here offers that change of angle and pace and is key to allowing Smith to play right up on the line. He knows Stewart is going to come hard and fast into any space that he creates. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date with more videos and analysis.